Hey, what's up guys? Lux here bringing you a new video and today we're taking a look at Lego set 75316, the Mandalorian fighter. This set comes with 544 pieces and retails for $60 or $59.99 in the United States. This is a Clone Wars Season 7 set, at least that's what we're trying to represent. You can tell by the box art up here, it has the Ahsoka clone, 332nd, I believe, battalion for her. We can see it comes with some exclusive figures. In fact, all of these are exclusive. Along with the figures, the ship was desirable ever since we saw the season. At least I've been wanting it, and I think many other people have voiced their opinions on it too. I think this is definitely one of the favorite sets from last year. But I guess we'll see here soon if it lives up to the expectation that, that at least I had for it. So, yeah, without further ado, let's get into the build. Alright guys, here is the set fully built up. But before we take a look at the build, we're first going to be taking a look at the minifigures. Alright guys, here we have the first of three figures including this set, all being exclusive. This is the Mandalorian Loyalist, and honestly for being like a, what you would typically expect to be like a default figure, you know. This guy has like no name, um, he's just a regular old Mandalorian or soldier. This guy has some really neat detail and printing on him, I mean, if I could get multiples of these guys, I would love it. You can even pass this guy up as the main character, that's how, that's how good the printing and like the suit that he's wearing is, the armor I should say. Obviously he has two pistols here, so that's a nice accessory to give these guys. Printing really well from the waist to the to the toes, all the way down. In the back he does have some printing, obviously covered up by the jetpack. Not too important to show there, but knowing he has some there is a nice little feature. Even though it's not really necessary with the jetpack, though still nice. Underneath, no face obviously, like I mentioned before, just a faceless other character. But honestly this guy looks incredible incredibly good the armor that lego gave him or detailed him by i'm i'm not sure if we saw this guy in particular like this type of armor style in scene 7 the clone wars which this is based off of or if maybe lego just took some art design they saw somewhere and like combined a bunch of ideas but this is a really nice looking figure would love to get multiples of these currently only available in the sets maybe we'll see them in the future who knows but yeah this is a great figure to start off with for sure and a really nice dirt inclusion as well anyways moving on next up here we have a figure that we've been wanting and asking for for a while now and we finally received in this set and fitting as well this is Bo-Katan since the Clone Wars since she got introduced even way after that we've been wanting this figure obviously made his way in the Rebels until finally in the Mandalorian maybe that's when Lego decided hey maybe we should make this figure and finally we got it here the detail is incredible here from the helmet obviously indicating her current group which is the Night Owls the detail from the toes all the way up to the top. Great. They even give her this extra accessory here. She does have this in the, obviously, the show and stuff as well. So, that's in the inclusion. Obviously, she has blasters as well. The printing on the chest arm. You can see some scratches there. Those aren't because I mistreated this figure. That's how they came. It didn't get scratched up in the bag or anything. Just detail that they wanted to show there to show that, yeah, she has battle scars. She's been through some things. If you've seen the show, she got a jetpack in the back. Obviously, printing as well. And underneath, she actually does have a face, as I will show right now. Unlike our Mandalorian loyalist friend here, she does have two facial expressions. This being the angry, I guess, ready to battle face in the back. You can see she has a more calm and relaxed face right there. The hair, people have been having issues with it, but I think it works pretty well. Maybe, if, obviously, they could have used a different hair piece. I think this one fits well. This is the hair piece I would have chosen. If I were to make this uh, Bo-Katan figure, but seeing it up close in person, yeah, I can see, I can see some of the issues here. I get what I was going for. I would have chosen this hair piece, like from just before this figure existed, making a custom one in my mind. This would have fit, but now seeing it in person, it definitely, I can see the issues with it. Maybe they had a better hair piece they could have used. I'm not sure. Yeah, obviously, you're not gonna want to have Bo-Katan with her hair piece on, anyways. You're gonna want, to, you're gonna want to keep her with her helmet on and. Yeah, obviously that's when she looks best. Any Mandalorian with the armor on would look their best there. So it definitely looks accurate. Something we've desired for a while now and happy to get it here. Now, moving on. Next up here, a character we didn't know we wanted until we actually saw him in the Clone Wars. This is Gar Saxon in his Season 7 outfit. This is, I mean, you take a Maul Mandalorian, you crank it up a few notches. This is Gar Saxon. We saw him first in Rebels, I believe. Then, obviously, he made a return or... I guess, or I guess made a more prominent appearance in Clone Wars now. And this armor, like, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, the red and black color scheme honestly always works. That's just a given. 
no matter what it is, someone's going to look incredible with that color scheme on. The yellow visor, that was a big highlight for me when I first saw it. I was hoping Lego would make it into a figure. I honestly never thought they would actually make this figure, but but glad we're seeing it here. They made a custom helmet mold just for Gar Saxon as well. Obviously, to be accurate to the one we see in the show, plus give off the vibe that, yeah, this is this guy is loyal to Maul, and he's not afraid to show it. The chest printing, incredible. The leg printing as well. He still has toe printing. He's got a belt. In the waist, in the back, he had the jetpack as we saw earlier. Underneath, he, they even give him this face, which is a nice inclusion as well. Here we see Gar Saxon in the Clone Wars version. Obviously, something I wasn't expecting, but very happy that we got it now. In the back, there is no second face, unfortunately, because he is bald. They typically don't give bald minifigures a second face, I guess, even if they have a helmet on. But yeah, they don't typically come with a hairpiece. They're not going to give it a second, second face. They at least gave it to Bo-Katan, even if it wasn't, like, the greatest hairpiece ever. But yeah, all these... Figures individually, they're great in their own right. Gar Saxon, I think definitely being a highlight, Bogotan, it's a figure we've always been wanting, but to get a figure we recently saw in media and everyone loved, at least the design for, and getting it like a year later, not coming from a movie, is uh, kind of shocking to see nowadays for Lego Star Wars. And I'm glad to have gotten it here. Bogotan obviously getting her own show, so maybe we'll be seeing more of her figures later on, but Gar Saxon definitely one of a kind here. If we get him a future set, I wouldn't be upset, but yeah. This is definitely a figure I won't see Lego making for a while once the set retires. But yeah, it's been the minifigures. Let's move on to the build. All right, now we're done looking at the minifigures. We can take a look at the build. Here we have the Mountain Starfighter in canon. I believe it's called the Gomlet Starfighter and probably some other weird Mandalorian name. But as far as I know, this ship is definitely based off Season 7 of the Clone Wars. This was also featured in previous seasons when dealing with other Mandalorians like Death Watch and things like that. We also saw this ship in... The Mandalorian TV show when Din Djarin tried to find Bo-Katan and her group to try to recruit her to save Grogu and all that. So, yeah, this is a definitely a more recognizable ship now than it was before. It's still a very desirable one even in the past. Obviously, this is Lego's second rendition of one. There was one released during the Clone Wars, which uh, featured both pre Vizsla, Obi-Wan, and a regular Mandalorian trooper. But this rendition obviously includes the other figures we just took a look at. And this definitely has an updated build. You can definitely tell it has some improvements. Some things missing from the other build. But we'll take a look at that right now. So first off we're going to start with the front here. We can see the cockpit area and the front build. The nose of the ship if you want to call it that. It's definitely built fairly nicely here if I lift it up here. So you guys get a better look. Obviously symmetrical on both sides. That's you know pretty standard for most Lego builds. We can see in the front it also has a nose cannon. Obviously these are more just for display, which I don't mind. I prefer the display like cannons rather than the stud shooters, we'll, which we'll take a look at here in a bit. In the front here uses a Nexo Knight shield piece. Obviously this has been used for many other builds since then, and I think definitely a very nice piece that we have gotten in the front. We can have the cockpit piece in here. It does actually fit two figures. So as we can see here in the cockpit, obviously it has this printed piece. Has been used before in many other sets. Obviously, they didn't indicate a little control area. We've seen it here. Definitely fits here, so no complaints there. It does fit two figures, as mentioned before. As you can see here, if we try to put the Mandalorian Loyalist in the back, he definitely fits very nicely in there. Obviously, he doesn't stick to the seat. However, you can sit him in a good position there. You can even use the jetpack on him, and it'll still fit. That's a very good part of the build, for sure, because in most other builds, even, I believe, the past Mandalorian Starfighter, you couldn't actually do that. You have to remove certain pieces so it actually fits the whole way. Same here with bo -Katan. The only thing that you will have to adjust is you have to move down this piece here, the attachment on her helmet, in order to close the cockpit piece the entire way and as you can see there they both fit pretty nicely no issues whatsoever besides having to move down the one piece on Bo-Katan's helmet it works just fine here I'd say that's a definite improvement from the last Mandalorian Starfighter rendition one thing that definitely isn't an improvement though this is something you guys might have noticed from the beginning of taking a look at the build here or something you can just tell right now in the front there is no landing gear now in the past Mandalorian Starfighter set, it did have landing gear, and that was very helpful to keep it up like this. Like, I can give you guys a little example here. Here we have the older model. It stands perfectly fine on its own with this landing gear right here. But this one obviously doesn't have that. And while it's not as far off from the ground as the other one, as you can see there, 
it definitely needed that so it doesn't just flop over like that it's a little you can tell a little bit less because obviously it's closer to the ground but imagine if this didn't have landing gear and it's a very simple build as well you can you can tell the significant difference here of how desperately it needs it obviously this one not as noticeable but still if you've had this set before if you just build it and try to set it up somewhere you can tell that there's some, definitely something missing in the front obviously it's something you can make yourself it's not very complicated to just get a couple pieces and put in the bottom here but just the fact that lego missed this crucial little feature is kind of concerning i'll be honest um now it's really one of the main complaints of the set obviously you've seen under reviews or just looked at this set closely you would have noticed but yeah that's uh the obvious misstep in this set continuing on in the ship in the front here next to the cockpit area we can see that it has some stud shooters now stud shooters i've never been a fan of these it wasn't included in the other Mandalorian starfighter probably because these weren't just a prominent staple to lego at the time but yeah they just look big ugly chunky just out of the way you can maybe treat them as like lights but they really don't deserve to be here you guys know how these work you just press down on the button that i just press down on and they go flying it looks slightly better without the red studs just standing out but yeah just the fact that that was included i don't know obviously lego messed up quite a bit in the front area luckily they got luckily lego did improve in some places like the cockpit area here being able to fit two figures with the jetpacks these display like little blasters or cannons i'm a big fan of that personally obviously that differs for other people but yeah that's pretty much it for the front moving our way further in the back putting down these wings here so we get a better grasp of what's actually included in the center here we have some grill pieces i think this looks really well to try to represent like a bit of an engine in the back i've always been a fan of like this design and yeah i like how it's obviously implemented here taking a look at it from the other side still looks just as good obviously you can't store anything in there no storing area back here either so that's something to keep in mind something that the other set did in fact have so you can count that as a negative i don't think it was necessary but yeah just something to point out moving down here we have a little bit of a sticker piece i think it has a little bit of nice detailing you can see there's some pipes leading into whatever the sticker is trying to represent just to add some depth to the set right here in the back here we have this i would assume is not a propeller but just another engine in the back i think like these boosters kind of except not as bright and obvious you can't really do much with this maybe to make it seem like it's spinning along with the ship and the wings as we'll get into and showing in a little in a little bit in the back here we already mentioned the engines i like the color they use here yellow similar to the last build i think it works well over here we got some more sticker pieces as detailing next to the engine on top there and those are the main last bit of detail in the back now we can get a closer look at the wings here so first off Taking a look at the build as a whole, they definitely got the shape of it really correctly, which is honestly impressive. The fact that you can get a lot of detail just like this and patterns on a Lego build, something that's obviously not the easiest to recreate. We've seen Lego do crazier before, but I'm always impressed with those kind of patterns that they're able to pull off. Definitely represents the colors of Season 7 a lot. We saw Soko have a similar color scheme in her outfit. We've seen just Mandalore in that final season be decked out with those colors. I just am a fan of it. And I think they represented it really well here. You can see a lot of depth and detail in the front of the wings, as I mentioned before. Something that I think they improved on from the previous model. And if we lift the wings up here and we put, and we put the ship in there, it's sitting position. You can see some of the detail underneath the wings as well. This is always something that, you know, it's a little hard to look at. You can see the bottom side of all the plates they use. It doesn't look the prettiest, but I think it, they did a pretty good job here trying to add... A little bit of detail or at least a pattern on both sides so it gives it definitely adding a little bit more detail than the previous model that's definitely an improvement right there and just overall it's an improvement but they're never going to make this look that great using these darker colored tones though i think it makes it less noticeable i'll be honest like this dark blue in contrast with the light blue like you can barely tell they don't really leave that big of a sore on my eye, or at least they're not as noticeable, in my opinion, at least. On the light gray and light blue, they're definitely a bit more noticeable, but since there's less of that, it doesn't pop out to me as much. Obviously, the defining feature of this ship is the fact that it can rotate and spin. A very popular way that this ship has been seen just floating around in canon is sideways. The cockpit can very easily spin 360 degrees like it's intended to. The wings can also 
fly around as you can see i think it obviously i'm not doing a very good job of representing that here but you guys get the idea the ship works how it's intended i think definitely something that they needed to get right they got it right in the first one i think they made a slight improvement here so i'm not too disappointed with that at all last but certainly not least we got some flick fire missiles at the end of the wings that i didn't show off down here you can see they're sticking out like a sore thumb but honestly they're not as bad as such shooters however you it's very, very easy to remove, but let me show you how it works first. You just push down on it slightly and then it goes flying like a significant range. I definitely prefer them over stud shooters and plus once you get rid of them, they don't leave like an empty and very exposed area to where it's going to really look ugly compared to the stud shooters down here in the front. You can tell that something's missing there. You can tell it doesn't look good. Here, it's very hidden and doesn't really stick out a lot. And it's incorporated to the build quite well. Same thing on the other side. Push down on it. They go flying. So, But yeah, guys. That is pretty much it for this set. Um, not much more to take a look at here. We saw some improvement. We saw some things missing from the previous set. Or just some improvements that were needed in general. Mostly in the front area, I'd say. Like with the stud shooters being included here. As well as no landing gear. That's definitely a big complaint. And a lot and one that a lot of people had it wasn't it didn't have any storage in the back but that's not really a, a bother complaint for me i definitely do think they represented season seven and the theme of it with this color scheme right here i don't know which color scheme i prefer personally i like the the previous one though i think this one just is good on its own so i like both iterations when it comes to the color scheme it's just a matter of the build definitely a little bit more to be desired but honestly compared to some of the builds that i like well, has been doing recently like with the scaled down tie fighters x-wing stuff like that this is definitely a very standout set in recent times and obviously being from the clone wars we rarely get some of these and it's always welcome especially with some incredible figures all exclusive to this set by the way and probably figures we won't see again for a very long time except maybe bo -Katan. so yeah gar saxon definitely a standout looks incredible custom helmet mode we already ran over that just something out of dreams that we're finally getting here at least coming from a, you know, Lego Star Wars, especially Clone Wars fan. I'm planning on doing a comparison with the older Lego Mandalorian Starfighter and this one. So stick around for that if you're interested. Definitely a lot of points I want to make. Some that I already made here, some that are, are going to be new. But anyways, if you enjoyed, you know what to do. Subscribe, renew, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.